Hello my angels. So a few things came in the mail and I definitely want to go over them with you guys. It's a very small number. It's not a lot of stuff. Um, but right off the bat, we have this ear cup. And I really, really, really like it. It's like a CZ ear cuff. And then it has like these two... This is a chain link, which is kind of cool. And then this is a rod. And then you have like this CZ encrusted. So when you put it on... I did like um, ear cuffs a couple of years ago. Uh, they were the Fendi ones. Remember when Fendi had those big chunky gold ones? Um, I bought the big chunky gold ones, but they were non-branded. And it looks like that. Like if I were to like put my my hair up like this. Oh, it's so freaking cute. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love your cuffs. And I know some people will like man maneuver it so that it looks like that. But my ears don't. Well, I guess it could. Kind of leave it like that. I, I don't know. I just like them. Okay. And again, just so you guys can see it. It's just, it's, it's far prettier in person. I mean, you can tell they're, they're fake crystals. You can tell they're not CZs. There's a difference. And that it's kind of like, you know, costume metal, but I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. So if I ever have to do like a little punk rock look or like all black kind of, and you, this can like zhuzh it up a little bit. Um, these gloves came in and I had bought them because I have, uh, so this is one of my, ironically enough, this is my work coat. So I have this LV scarf that I bought a couple of years ago and I made a video about it and it's really pretty and it's from DH gate and it has like, you know, this iridescent shine. It's starting to pill. So I wear this with this green gap coat with the hood. So this is my, literally, this is how I show up to all my clients' homes. Because it's my work. <laughs> Alright, so then... So this is what you see when you when you open the door. Hi, my name's Myra. <laughs> how can I help? <laughs> and then I, I bought these gloves because I have these in my pocket. And they're mittens, and they're awesome. And I love them because they're super warm. But when I'm driving... Or I want to like touch my phone, it, it's it's obviously not good. Um, I had these specifically because when when my dad had the stroke, his hand atrophied like this, and we couldn't we couldn't open his fingers, so we had to get like Botox injections to loosen them, and we never got the second set of Botox. So his hand was literally like this. So the mittens are perfect because I couldn't put gloves on him, so I would just put his hand in here with the mittens. And then, you know, so I always kept it in this pocket because I usually came to see him after work. And if I had to go out with him or we wanted to go out, I would put his hand in the mittens to make sure that he didn't get cold. So now, um, I love the mittens, but, you know, kind of, I don't want them anymore. You know what I mean? You know, I don't want them anymore. Um, I got these. Right? And they look like this pattern which to me always looks like this is the same pattern as the dog sweater that I got um my cat or the cat sweater whatever oh here it is and then you put it in and I love long ones I love long gloves and you put it through your fingers like this so you could wear it like that or scrunch it up you know and then my hands are still free for me to touch my phone and to do other things, you know, that you can't do with mittens. And it's still cute. And then if it gets cold, I could just go like this, you know, kind of put them in, hold it, you know, and it's kind of like being a mitten again. Now, are these as warm as the mittens? No, because they're not lined. So, these, right, are, again, a, a nice pattern, but they're lined with this material. These are not. So this is actually still chillier. It's almost like having no coverage, but it being fashionable than having coverage. And I didn't know what I was going to get. So I was like, let me just see. Do I think they're cute? Yes. Do I think this is nice for maybe staying at home and keeping a little warm? If you're one of these people that like have cold hands? Yes. Do I think this is going to keep me warm in the winter? Absolutely not. 
So I got to figure out if I, I'm definitely keeping the mittens in my <laughs> in my pocket now because <laughs> I wear them because it's cold. <laughs> but I feel like when I'm in the car um, and I want one hands free kind of like I might put this on so I could still use my phone um, until the heat comes on. You know what I mean? Because it takes a while for the heat to come on right away. So I don't know. I have to figure out what I'm going to do with these because it wasn't like they're not as warm as I thought they might they might be but you never know until you put them on but I do like the fact that my fingers are out I think it's cute for fashion I think it's cute for a little photo shoot um but yeah so this is one of my coats with the scarf and then you saw my gloves for that one ah I actually left a coat in my client's house it's so bad and um it was the one that that's been on camera all the time the Michael Kors one with the black and white Fendi scarf. And she's like, you left your coat here. And I'm like, well, I'm already home. So I'll, <laughs> I'll let you know next time I'm in Brooklyn and then we'll, I'll come and get it. So embarrassing. Um, and then hold on, let me just move my laptop. So this is the case I got for my laptop, which I love, but it's destroyed. And this is a laptop I'm gonna give my brother anyway. So isn't it pretty? It looks like that. And if you open it, it looks like that. I got it from eBay. I'll see if I could find the link. I think it's so beautiful and elegant. And everyone was always like, <gasps> Where did you get that? It's just, isn't it pretty? It's just so pretty. So I wanted to show you that. I, I love these little flowers on the bottom. It's just so lovely. So I'll put that link there in case anybody likes it and then they want to get their own, um, if it's still a valid link. But that one's getting kind of beat up. I've already talked to you guys about the backpack organizer from Temu, which I'm in love with. This also, depending on how tall your tote is, can be a long tote organizer. You know, like when the totes are long and you're like, how am I going to get in there? It'll fit the, the laptop. That's why it was here, because I wanted to see like how it fit and how it, you know. So it'll fit, and there's more room, so it'll fit like a 15 inch probably. This is a 13. Um, and it might even fit a 17 inch as long, you know, because the 17 inches are taller, but this is, you know what I mean? So it'll be like here and here. So depending on how big your bag is, you could do that. Um, I, I spoke to you guys last time. I'll put the link for this, of course, in this video. Um, girl, I'm shipping this out this week. Um, which it will, by the time I publish this, you'll get it, but I'm, I'm, I still have to ship this one out and the Adidas shorts with the long sleeve shirt. Those two are going out this week. I thought I shipped it and then I found it and I'm like, <gasps> sorry. So sorry being honest <laughs> so then that then all the giveaways will be up to par like up to date so then there are these two sunglass cases and then that's it um let me see if i can find these for you guys just look, yeah no i'm not i'm not gonna do that okay so one of them looks like goyard and i actually just ordered some stuff from temu they had like these goyard type type of shopping bags um, and I'll show you guys, but this one looks like Goyard, but it's not. It's definitely pleather. It's not leather at all. You could feel the pleather. It's almost like the jacquard, you know, the jacquard kind of feeling from Gucci. Um, it feels like that. And it looks like this. And I think it's really pretty. It's a lot nicer than I thought. And then it also comes in green and the inside looks like this. It's like a soft brushed. It feels like suede, but it's not. And that's to protect your glasses. And let's see if it fits. Oh, one of these two because these are the biggest ones I have so far oh it does I don't like it when the when these are out so I mean it, I don't like it I'm gonna get another case for that and this is the other one again not a big fan of when it sticks out I'd rather have glasses that kind of like fit in here I don't know what I'm going to do with these cases because I'm not a big fan of the, the back of the lens sticking out. Whereas with the other ones, if you saw, they fit perfectly. Um, so that doesn't stick out. And then these, this one, sorry, is the brown. Oh, is it the same color? I think I did order two of the same color. No, they're different. One is like a, a gray and the other one's like a taupe, like more brown. So th these are supposed to be leather. I don't know if they really are. They were $10 versus 
the five that the other one was. And it's supposed to be leather, but the inside is the same material as the other one. So I think they're the same seller, just different. This is definitely plastic. This is not leather. This feels more like leather than the other ones, but I do have these two. I just got to figure out what glasses I'm going to put in here. You know what I hear right now? Rihanna, pay me what you owe me. Please don't call me on my blood. And I have my money. Dun, dun, I have my... Okay, and then I also, I don't know why nobody owes me anything. <laughs> but that's what's in my head. And then I have these things that I bought from Amazon, which I'm going to show you. But they're more for my work. But people are like, what do you buy outside of fashion? And I'm like, you really want to know what I buy? <laughs> so we'll open up. These are my little Amazon purchases. Oh, I wanted to make a separate video about this, but hold on. This is a cover up. Well, I already opened it. I wanted to make a separate video about this, but I opened it. Um, it's a cover up and it's striped and it's from Amazon. And it looks like this. It's supposed to be like this big oversized kind of cover up for the beach or for the summer. And what I was thinking of wearing this with is open, completely open, with a white tank top and white capris. And then some cute sandals and a, a designer belt that cinches in the waist to make it look more luxe. Let's see what I mean not expecting this <laughs> pay me what you owe me please don't call me on my little bitch I'm sorry I wasn't supposed to say that word but that's the song that's on my mind so it looks like this and I would never wear it like this because this is very unflattering right so even if you cinch the waist in Right? I still look heavy. So that's why I was thinking if I open this, this is a, a crypto shirt. Sorry, guys. Um, it's, it's ugly, but it, it has meaning. And then, oh, there are pockets. Oh, there are little pockets here. So I was going to wear it like this open. And then probably like that. With the white tank top, white capris. And then a belt that comes around like this to cinch the waist in. Um, and then some comfortable shoes. And then that was going to be like my little summer kind of cute vibing outfit. Uh, you could also wear this as a cover up for the beach. You could wear it as the dress the way that it is. And just, you know, lounge around in it. I know that when you're like more petite and slim and you wear these oversized things, it looks very different. But I'm just happy that this fits and it looks good with or without it being open. So I'll put the link there, especially if you're a plus size person, it's very difficult to find things that look elegant and nice. And they have all different patterns. Like this is the pattern I chose just because I really like the nautical theme and I feel like it goes more with summer. Um, hold on. I'm gonna fold it into a nice little package. And then the rest of it, that I, the stuff that I got are tools. <laughs> That's why I'm like, why do you want to see what I have? <laughs> I also got the thread so I can finally sew. Well, let's see if it's in here. I can finally sew. It's not in this one. So if you have plaster walls, you can't use anchors in your walls because they're just going to fall out. Plaster is a very fragile kind of material. It's hard. It's durable. But when you put something on it that you, that's moving, like a, a hook or if you're going to be putting like clothes or a backpack on hooks, you should use what's called molly bolts. And these are molly bolts. And a molly bolt pretty much works like a toggle bolt, only without the toggle. Um, and it's a little bit more structured. So for example, this is a molly bolt for a very thin wall. Right? And what happens is... With the molly bolt, it goes in like this. And you see this part right here? This little part right here? That's how thick the wall should be, the plaster or the 
drywall. If it's thicker than that, this one's not going to work well. Because what happens is when you twist this, yeah, that's the burn. It's getting really bad. I know, but at least it's peeling and that's, it looks like I have vitiligo and I don't, that's going to be a really bad scar. Just the, the, my hands were my favorite part of my body. My hands and, you know, well, there goes that. So when, if you don't have this tool, which I had to get because there was this one wall that none of them would stick. You basically put, you leave it like this and then you put this tool here. Well, I, I kind of closed it. So let me open it back up here like that. And then you pull it and you go like this and it'll pull it. And when it pulls it, it pulls this whole thing back. And so what happens is this kind of smushes back in the here and it creates like a, so your wall is like this. And if you put it in this way, it'll kind of smush back and hold against the wall like this. So now it's not going anywhere. It's stuck. It's right. Like you can't pull, pull like, so if you're, if you're mounting things that are heavier and you don't want, if you use an anchor an anchor might actually just fall out, it'll just, bloop, it'll just It'll just fall out but if you use this it's it's smushed against the wall so it's not going anywhere it's also going to leave in some cases a big hole when you leave and then you have to cover that hole up with plaster but it'll hold whatever you need to hold so since I do a lot of mounting and stuff like that I wanted to make sure the things that I mount hold and you want to get it molly bolts like this kit has a bunch of them so it has this one See how thick that wall could be? That could be a thick piece of plaster. Um, then they have this one, which is a thinner hole. But again, I know you guys probably want to see it. So this is about the same length again as the other wall, but it's just a shorter, thinner hole. This is a bigger hole. So this will hold more weight because it's thicker and it's bigger. This will hold a little bit less weight, but it'll, it'll also be a smaller hole. Um, so you kind of have to know what size the wall is when you put this there. Now, if you don't have these tools, that's fine. You just, it has these little clamps. I don't know if you can see that right there. That you put it in the wall and it kind of like sticks inside the wall. And then you take your, your screwdriver um, or your drill and you just twist. And then it'll, it'll, it'll kind of like keep spinning, spinning, spinning this part will get sucked up and then it'll stop spinning. And when it stops spinning, you have to stop like immediately. It's like, stop the second. Cause then it's, it's just, it's not good. So then, then you take the screw out and when you take the screw out, all you're going to see is this against the wall. So then you put this through whatever the material is that you need, you know, that you're trying to mount and then you, you know, you, you tighten it. And then ta-da, you have a, a fixed mount against the wall. And so I bought these because I needed them to, to help some of my clients that have the plaster walls. Because this is what you're supposed to use. They also have other things called toggle bolts. With the toggle bolts, you have to make a, a much larger hole because you have to put the toggle through and then it opens up like a spring like that. And then it... it it goes against the wall. Like if this is the wall, it'll, it'll, you put it in and it opens up and then it goes like this as you tighten the screw and it just holds against the wall like this. Some people don't like that because if one end of the toggle breaks for whatever reason, then it, it doesn't hold as well as this, which it can't break. It'll just be smushed against it. But then you have this thing that's smushed against the wall that you have to kind of like to get this out, you have to take like a nail or a screw and then hammer it until the whole thing goes through. So the hole will be as big as the head here. And then you cover that up. With a toggle bolt, you're making a big hole, right? And then you're using tension to pull it in to create that, that smush. So it's like this, it's open, right? And the screw's going through it. And then as you screw it, it tightens tight. Like it's, it's closer, 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 closer. And then it hits the wall. And then it creates that hold that this does. But you have more, more leg room. A lot of people like toggle bolts 
when like, let's say I'm going through, let's say you have a piece of wood, like the guy that I was working with, he had brackets and the brackets were this thick, right? So I would need a toggle bolt that's this thick plus the length that it's going to go into the wall and grab it, right? And I can't use this because these are never that long. Molly bolts are never that long. So you need a toggle bolt. You need like a three inch or a four inch toggle bolt, right? And then you put it, you, you put the toggle bolt through the wood and then you put the, the back on it, right? The butterfly clip. And then you put it through the wall and then you tighten it. And as it tightens, it'll, you know, like the toggle bolt will start pulling back, back, back until it hits the wall and then it'll be, hold it together. But toggle bolts are good when you need three to four inches. Toggle bolts are great for mounting TVs. Great for that. These are more for like hooks, uh, heavy paintings and pictures, um, I'm like looking around my room, um, shelves and all the stuff I have mounted. Uh, right now I have the Ikea Besta, uh, mounted to the wall on the ceiling. So you could use, you know, molly bolts or toggle bolts for that. Um, luckily my entire wall, this wall is wood. I don't know why, but the whole thing is wood. So I don't ever have to use anything. I just drill right into the wall and it holds it like it's a stud. I don't know. So this whole wall, thank God, I never had to like manipulate or maneuver. I just drilled right into the wall and that was it. So if I had a house, that's what I would do because it just makes life so much easier. So I got that and then I got this one, which is basically the same thing. There's the thread. Only it's a kit that has all the toggle bolts in there. So I'm going to put some of these toggle bolts in here so they're all together. Um, but I wanted this because it has the organizer and I like that it has all the different sizes and you can see now that you know how to, how to look at toggle bolts, this one has a little bit, it's for thicker walls. This one, this one is for thinner walls. This is for thinner walls than this. So it kind of goes from thin to the thickest and they have other ones that are even thicker than this, but you have to buy those. And then last but not least the thread that I needed to fix the bag that I created. This is supposed to be clear plastic nylon thread and it's for this bag that I'm, I'm working on right now. I'm gonna do this tonight actually. So this is that denim bag from AliExpress that looks like a Chanel bag but it's not. So then I put little Chanel pins on the side and on the bottom. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the thread because you see how like it does that to kind of just sew it here, 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 and here so that this stays flat so that no one can take it off my bag kind of thing. And then I'm going to sew it right just here and here so that that stays flat. I don't think I need to sew this one. I don't think I need to sew this one. And then I have to sew it here, 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 and here. So how I'm going to sew it just to show you guys is there's two layers, right? So I could literally pull the two layers apart. There's the inside and then this. So I'm literally going to take this layer out so that it doesn't hit that, right? Because I don't want it to go through. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create, you know, like that little knot that you create when you're sewing. And I'm actually going to just put a little, a little piece in here so it'll catch. And then from here, I'm going to put the thread here, close it, and then go into the material, come back out over here, go in and out, close it, go into the material, come out from the top, go over it, close it, right? Closing it means you make a little knot, go back in and come out from here. You know what I mean? So there's going to be one little knot in that's going to be covered by something here because it's clear. So you're not really going to notice it. And then I'm going to go into the material and then like close it in, you know what I'm saying? So I'm going to do that on both of them and then I'll put the lining back in because I really don't want... I don't want it to get stuck on the lining per se in case anything ever happens with the lining. I have to replace the lining. I don't have to worry about anything else. I think this is a durable bag. I like these straps a lot. The interesting thing is that it has like, you know, the Chanel 22 that everybody's like losing their minds about because it has like the same thing where the straps just move in and out. But with this one, you don't really have to move the straps often. You know what I mean? Like once you wear it, I think it should be fine. Like, I, I don't I don't see people manipulating it. Like, I don't know why you would want to wear it long or short or whatever. It's a shoulder bag. Wear it like that. You could make it a crossbody or a longer shoulder bag by cinching in. But I wouldn't do that. Like that. 
and then wearing it. That looks weird. Or you could do it this way. Because nobody's going to see it then. Close the bag. Hold on, let me show you. Wear it with the one long strap because all they're going to see is what's in the front. They're not going to see that the back looks like this. Because it's going to be against your body. And then it looks like a longer bag, like a longer strap if you want that like slouchy look. But I'm okay with it just being a shoulder bag. I don't need anything else like that. So this is going to be something I'm rocking this summer. I like it when I create the bags. I've never had anyone be like, that's not a real Chanel. It's like, of course not, dum-dum. I put pins on it, you know? I wouldn't say dum-dum, but that's what I would think in my head. I'm not going to lie. It is exactly what I would be thinking. You know, but I'd be like, no, it's a bag that I put pins on. Um, Got to go. See you when I see it. You know, like, people. Uh, and... That's basically all I have for you guys. It's everything else is I've already shown you. There's more stuff coming in now. Um, but there, a lot of them are just like sunglass cases, some jewelry. Um, I don't think any bags or anything like that are coming in that I remember. Other than the Temu stuff. Um, I did do that little Temu haul. I did two more. They're coming. Um, and then I have more stuff in my cart that I want to pick up. Because what happens is the Temu, I feel like... If you get in early, like with eBay and all these other things, the prices are cheap. But when they get enough customers and enough people, they can start raising their prices, kind of like Amazon did the same thing too. And then they can start changing it. Like, you know, like kind of, I think they're trying to become like an Amazon kind of thing. So now is a good time to get in, buy everything at a super low price because later the prices are going to go up and at least you got everything you wanted, you know, during the promo phase. And that's why I'm buying all this stuff from Temu now. And the thing with Temu is just because you see it once doesn't mean you're ever going to see it again. You know, like you never know what's going to happen with them. So I don't know. I have this bag and I was going to wear it this summer. Um, but now I'm hanging out with people that have like a lot of money in abundance. This, this came out, so it has to be closed up. I don't know if I'm actually going to wear this bag. I think I might close it up and give it to my sister-in-law. Um, so that she could wear it because, you know, her standards are a little bit lower than mine. Uh, just a little bit, not a lot. And her bag is really beat up. It's a Tory Burch bag, but it's really beat up. But she says it's the only bag she has. And I gave her that little Fendi bag, you know, the, 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 the one that had the word Fendi underneath with, um, gold letters, uh, the Nano and the Fendigraphy Nano with the Zuka pattern. I gave her that bag and I gave her the Bottega Veneta dumpling with the gold clunky, clunky kind of like clasp. But those are more evening bags. So I kind of want her to have a functional like day bag. So I am going to bring it to the guy for him to sew this up. And I'm probably going to give this to her. I'm probably never even going to wear it. I might try to wear it once just so at least I could, you know, because I bought it. Um, but it was only $20. Um, just to see what it feels like and how comfortable this is compared to the other one. The one that I have is more authentic, the Lindy, and I love that bag, but I'm ready to let that go and just start using In The Loop and the Picatin because I feel like they look more authentic. And then I have this one, which you guys have seen over and over again. And this is the, the Temu version of, it, it comes in black, this color, and orange. You know, it doesn't have the bottom the way that it has. It's not, it's not an exact dupe. It has lining on the inside all the way on the bottom too because in the real one it's leather on the bottom and in the real one it's just a zipper here with leather around it and then you have um that's it so that the interior is completely different and then of course this is non-branded but it does come with a really cool strap that makes it look very elegant like it just looks really pretty when the straps are both out like that so i do like these bags i don't I'm not like in love with them. I was in love with the black one that I'm giving away that looked like the Yves Saint Laurent one. I loved that bag. But I have to start getting rid of bags and I might as well get rid of the, the more inexpensive ones um, and, and start wearing my, my real ones. Like I really have to start wearing this one and I showed this in another video. I really do need to start wearing this one. And I love this bag. You know, I think it's gorgeous. It's amazing. It's perfectly lined up everywhere. Like everything, it's just, I got this from one of um, my coworkers when I worked at Uber and I paid her $400 for this bag and I love it. 
So she was just like moving and she wanted to get rid of a bunch of stuff. And she's like, just sell it. So she had very expensive things. Just sell it for whatever. I just, I don't want to carry it with me. I'm like, okay, I'm going to buy that one. <laughs> like, just so you know. Um, and I bought some other jewelry pieces from her. It was, it was, she had really nice stuff and she's like, whatever, I don't care. Just, just sell it. And I'm like, okay, I will do that. Um, so yeah. Oh, look, it's already starting to peel. Mm, there, see? Okay. Interesting. I like it. I do like it. I like the style and I like the, like if I, if I could buy the real one, I would. Uh, well, no, I like these things as gifts when it's too expensive for me to justify spending my hard earned money on. I'd rather it be a gift. I'm like, I don't want to spend that much money on a bag. Not anymore. When I was younger, I was like, oh, prestige, this, that. Yes. Look at my Louis Vuitton. Look at this. You know, look at my Gucci. Look at, you know, you know, my Hermes scarf clip and look at all this stuff that I'm wearing. And I was all about it. You know, my Hermes scarf and da da da. But. I'm over it. I feel like the more I make these videos, the more over it I become. I mean, I have nice things. That's why I'm like, oh, I don't have to worry about it. I think if I didn't have nice things, I might want and desire them. But like when I see the prices that are out there, I'm grateful that I bought my things before the price increases, before I saw what was happening to these brands. Um, I don't respect the companies anymore for what they're doing to the people. And I get that they're trying to make it exclusive because they don't want certain people to wear their stuff or to be sold on the market as dupes. But you're just making it easier for people to create the dupes because nobody's going to want to pay the prices for the real thing. Um, it's not really creating the market of exclusivity that they think it is. Um, even though you can spot a fake from a real one if you have the real thing. Like it's very rare that you can look at a fake and be like, I can't tell the difference. Like you really can when you have a real one, but it's still not going to deter people. Do you know what I mean? And then super Jacob with a D not, not with a J super Jacob. He was talking about how he thinks that they might be getting into the dupe market. So they'll be creating stuff and selling them on the dupe market for less, even though it is pretty much the same quality. They'll just won't have the chip or the number or the whatever, you know? And they'll be making more money in the dupe market than they would in the retail outlets. And I was like, you know, I thought the same thing. I really did. I was like, I wouldn't be surprised if these guys were selling it. Because remember when you saw them, if you watch Gucci on the House of Gucci on Amazon, she was like, it's a good fake, you know, like, but how, how is this happening? You know, and, and even the guy was like, this is, a, this is a really good fake. It's good quality and blah, blah, blah. Like, where are they getting it from? Kind of like, did it, is it coming from the factories or how are they getting their hands on these things? Um, and even then when I watched that movie, it made me think like, would they do that? Would they sell their stuff on the black market? You know, like they're, they're rejects as opposed to them actually getting rid of or burning or whatever their inventory or their stock, just put it out there make some money on eBay or whatever and then you're still making a profit off of a bag that is not high quality enough to sell to your expensive clients, but you could still make money off of it on the back end. Do you know what I'm saying? So it's just interesting. That's not what's happening. It's just a theoretical, alleged kind of like, well, you know, I thought about this. It's an idea that popped into my head, you know, could be possible. I, it's not completely, you know. Um, but it was interesting because when he said it, I was like, I've thought about this for a very long time because there are some bags that I've received that I was like, this looks real. Like this has to be a QA reject because there's no way that they're that good at making these bags. Like this looks, feels, everything is identical to a real bag, except that the lining was off or something was off, you know? Um, and I was like, there's no way this has to be a QA reject. Like this has to be QA reject. I was like, but this is just some jewelry that I had in them. And I was like, you know, I should be wearing my nice jewelry. So this is just like a nice ring that I bought a long time ago. It's actually a light green sage kind of stone, uh, cabochon cut and it's really pretty. Um, and then this is like a, it's a CZ and it's a blue stone. It's not sapphire. Um, I think it's like blue topaz or something. 
uh, in 14 karat gold. So that is gold, the, the bracelet. But the actual stones are just gemstones. They're not like sapphire and diamonds. It's, I think it's blue topaz and um, cubic zirconia. And then it's really pretty if you look at it from, from this end. Like you could see like the detail of how each one is like cut and you could see the stone in, on the bottom and it's just a really pretty tennis bracelet. So I decided to start wearing my nice things. Um, yeah, so somebody asked me to make a video and I'm gonna do that on my vintage designer bag collection. So I'm gonna do that. I'm moving all the furniture in my room because I didn't tell you the story about that guy, right? So there's this guy that I met and we hung out three times already. And every time he, he takes me out to these really expensive restaurants, like $500 dinners, $200 just for appetizers at the bar, you know, like, and he's nice, you know, he's really nice, but he, he's very honest. He's like, you know, I'm divorced. I have two kids. I'm almost done two and a half years. And then they're both 18. Um, he doesn't want to get married. He doesn't want to have kids anymore. You know, he just wants a companion for life and he doesn't want to travel. And I'm like, well, that's a deal breaker. Those are all my threes. Like, that's what I'm looking for. Someone to get married to, have kids and travel with. Like, you know, but we're, but our chemistry is great and we have great conversation and everything. So I was like, okay, you know, I'll hang out, whatever. So I want to kind of re, like, and his house is impeccable. Like, it's old money, beautiful, impeccable. And I'm like, oh, me and my messy room, like, it's time for me to, like, you know, show what I know. So I'm, I have nice things. I just have to move everything around so that it looks more presentable. Uh, like an adult's room versus like a teenager. <laughs> But it's not my fault. No, it is my fault. Um, and then I have to start listing all the stuff for eBay that I want to sell. And as soon as the channel starts growing, I can start giving you the stuff that's on the rack. Because I have stuff on the rack and then I have four boxes beneath them that are on like the, the long part of the rack. Those are all giveaways. And then I have three bags over here. I just have a lot of stuff to give away. And we're only up to seven seventy five dollars um, at this point. I don't know what we're going to be later. Maybe seven, like 800 or whatever. Um... So we haven't even touched the surface of the giveaways. I'm just trying to give away little things now and then kind of get bigger as the channel grows. That makes sense. But that's what I have for you guys. Until next time, my lovelies. Bye.